What's up guys, welcome along, thanks for watching. Uh, episode two of the CB750 build. If you haven't seen episode one, I shall pop some links for you to go and have a look at that. In this episode, we're gonna be trying getting it set up on a center stand, or it hasn't got a center stand, so this block of wood that's down there, we need to take the exhaust off for that and getting the back wheel out of it and trying to get the swing arm over there mocked up in there to see how it fits. Already we have run through the bike quickly and we have taken the geometry of the bike and made this laminated sheet so we can keep it. So we've got shock lengths, angles, swing arm lengths, wheelbase, trail rake, fork offset, everything on this sheet. And then we've also labeled it down on the back. It's important to do this before we start so that once it's together, we can take the same measurements and see how it's gonna handle. And if we've got any problems, we can make some adjustments and change it. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about motorcycle geometry, I can't recommend enough this MotoGP technology book by Neil Spaulding. This is the third edition. I'm not sure if the fourth edition is out yet, but this has everything from aerodynamics to engines to clutches, anything that you could possibly want to know about the geometry of a motorcycle. So because this hasn't got a center stand on it anymore, uh, it's already been removed by the previous owner. The first job we need to do is get this block of wood underneath it and support it centrally under the bike so we can get the swing arm and the wheel out. To get that block of wood in, we've got to take this exhaust off. To get the exhaust off, we've got to attack these header bolts. So I'm a little bit apprehensive about this. Let's see how seized up they really are. So there we have it, headers are off. Let's just undo the bolt, hopefully at the rear, and we can pull the whole exhaust system off. Well, there we have it, the exhaust system is off the bike and I have to say, I am absolutely astonished. Uh, that was not staged in the slightest 
and all of the bolts have come straight undone and the exhaust system has come straight off. So I am so pleased with that. Let's get it set up on this central stand on a block of wood and start trying to rip this swing arm out. So we've just stuck a strap through the front of the frame down some tie down points just to make the bike slightly more secure whilst it's on this block of wood to get the swing arm out. First job, let's cut the old chain off. I'm trying to take this whole swing arm piece with the rear set, shock, rear brake, everything off in one piece if I can. So we're just going to try and get this fiddly little rear brake light switch spring off. And voila, the brake light switch sensor and spring has been disconnected.
So now for the first time, we can see how difficult this is really going to be to fit. I've tried to remove everything in as large a sub-assembly as I can so that when things come to go back together for me to use any of the components or see how it was fitted, it's still together. Now we need to take some measurements of these swing arms and get her in. So here we are quite some time later and I am a man so I can't multitask so I have been using a bit of brain power trying to work out some maths so I couldn't talk you along through the video and try and work out what I was doing at the time. So we're just going to run through what we've done. Now before we start this I just want to state that this swing arm in this bike I've not seen before. I did do a bit of research online to read up couldn't find anything so it was going into it blind and just try and figure it out as we go along and get it to fit by hook or by crook. So the first thing I wanted to do was make sure that the centre point of the rear wheel was actually the centre point of the front part of the swing arm. I have got the exploded drawing as you can see here but I don't even know what year bike this came off, so I don't know if there's different size spaces each side of the swing arm, etc. So I just wanted to confirm that. So to do that, I've got a lovely piece of machined kitchen cupboard. Don't tell the missus. And I laid the swing arm on there and I marked out the rear and then worked out the centre point. I then transferred those markings to the other side of the board, including the centre point. I then pop the swing arm back on, upside down, so the part that goes into the frame was actually on the board and made sure it was nice and square against the face of the timber. Once I knew I then had everything nice and square at the back where the marks were and at the front, I transferred the centre line of the board onto this part of the swing arm. I then marked that the little greys of a hacksaw mark and then I could measure the steel rule to see if this mark was in fact in the centre of the swing arm. So hopefully you can see there the total measurement is 235 millimetres making the centre point 111.75 millimetres. So now we know that this is the centre point of the swing arm and it is bang in the middle of the rear wheel. What we need to do is measure the actual total width of the inner sleeve of the swing arm, where these spaces sit. It slightly protrudes on the face of the swing arm there. If you can see that when you put a square on it, it doesn't actually touch the arm and the same on this end here, so that it runs on the inner bearings. So we did that by utilizing a steel rule and a square, as you can see here. And that gave us the total measurement that needs to be clamped of 238 millimetres. So that is the width that needs to be clamped in the, swing, in the frame. Once we had the swing arm measurements, we went back to the bike and we measured from where the swing arm will sit, or the inner race of the swing arm bearings sleeve will sit, and measured point to point across the frame. As you can hopefully see there, that gave us a reading of 248 millimetres. So that is good news, with the frame being 248 millimetres wide and the swing arm point to point on the inner sleeve being 238, we've got 10 millimetres wider frame, which means we don't need to machine any of this swing arm outer sleeve down. Good news, we just need to equally space it as we know we need to keep the centre line in the middle and not offset of 5 millimetres either side and that will give us the perfect size. So luckily, I had a couple of bits of steel knocking around with the right size diamond as a hole already in. So we just cut them up and these are 4.8 millimetres just to give us a little bit of play. So I was hoping then we could try and put the swing arm in. The next point we get to is the spindle size. So this here is the ZRX spindle. This one here is the CB spindle. So we got the micrometer out and mic these. And as you can see, the ZRX one is a lot thicker than the CB one. So the ZRX spindle is never going to fit through the frame hole in the CB. And I don't want to be enlarging this or cutting this out of the CB frame. So that leaves us one option of using the CB spindle. So now we know all of this information, we put it into the bike and tried to have a test fit. 
So it was this point now I ran into a little bit of problem as I couldn't get the spindle through no matter what I tried. But when I come around this side on closer inspection, I found that I couldn't get the spindle hole to line up in the swing arm with the frame. On a closer inspection, what appears to have happened is the swing arm, when it's lined up, is actually hitting on the rear part of the engine case in there. So, we now have two options. It's not much, it's not even half a whole ounce, so it's only a small amount of material that needs to be removed. The two options are to either remove material from the swing arm, which if we just pop this back out, you can see has been done by Kawasaki before, but the actual piece of engine casing that's rubbing looks like it is just a casting on the rear of the casing here. It doesn't look like it's anything that's going to damage any of the internal bits. So I believe the easiest way will be to grind this down slightly to get the clearance on the face of the swing arm. So this is where we're currently at. Uh, the plan moving forward now is to grind this engine casing down slightly, steady at a time, keep trial and error fitting it. Not too concerned about if it's not too neat because when the engine and gearbox does come out, I can actually face it off and finish it off nicely, just so long as we get the clearance to get the swing arm to fit in there. So we're going to grind that down and I now know how to get the correct or what to get machined up to fit inside here. So inside a swing arm, we have a sleeve, like so, a needle roller, another needle roller, use needle rollers because they are a higher loaded bearing and can carry more load, a ball, a ball bearing which is to stop the internal shaft or the swing arm move inside to side once it's in the frame and then a spacer on the other end. So what I'm going to try and do is to get one of these sleeves machined up to the outer diameter of the ZRX swing arm and the inner diameter of the CB spindle. I'm also going to get it extended by 4.9 mil and have a face in it like this so that when it sits in the frame it's got a nice flat surface without having to try and shimmy washers in as you're fitting it. And then the same with this part here uh, we're going to get this extended by 4.9 mil and keep the flange on it. And then hopefully we can keep all the original bearings, seals, everything in the ZRX swing arm. So in the future, ordering parts won't be a problem. And we should be able to slip the new components straight in either side like that. No fiddling around with washers and spacers. Pop it in, slide the spindle through and bolt it up. So that is where we're currently at guys, that is the state of the bike as it stands, uh, the end of it for this episode. Coming up in the next episode, like I said, we're going to try and grind the crankcase down and I was hoping to get around a friend's machine shop to actually turn these components up on a lathe uh, so, or wherever we go, get it on the camera. So we shall see what happens there and then hopefully next time the swing arm will be in I've got to source uh, an extra spa spacer for the rear wheel, it's missing a spacer. And on a bit of a side note, the rear shock bush that was in doesn't fit over the size of the CB frame. So I will need to get some poly bushes, but that is a job for another day. That's just a quick thing that I tried whilst we had the swing arm mocked up in position. So there we have it. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the next episode that's coming. And if you missed the first one, there'll be a link in the description or somewhere in the screen up there. And check out some of the other content on the channel if you've enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. We'll see you soon. Ta-ta.